We cannot resemble God if we are not walking with Him, spending time with Him, entertaining a daily relationship with Him, seeking Him. And we cannot seek Him without first having access to Him and peace with Him. I want to read from uh, Genesis 5, uh, verses 22 through 24. It says there, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And from Hebrews 11, verses 5 and 6, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them, that diligently seek him. This is about um, all that is written in our canon uh, of scripture about Enoch. That's actually uh, another verse that we will read later. Um, But what do we see here? If we uh, take these two together, there are um, five characteristics that we can uh, highlight. The first one is that Enoch had faith. This, of course, we get from Hebrews 11, which is all about faith. By faith, Enoch was translated. He had faith. From uh, Hebrews, we also see that he diligently sought God. And he walked with God. That's what's written in Genesis 5. It's written twice even. And Enoch pleased God. And finally, Enoch did not see death, which is regarded a reward. So these five things stick out. And we get back to this. this. Now, Enoch is a type of the church. He did what God wants the church to do. And it pleased God. And even his name points in the direction of what the church ought to do. Enoch means teaching. And Enoch was the first of four generations of preachers. We have Enoch, we have Methuselah, Lamech, and then Noah. And of course, then was the flood. And these four generations of preachers, if you will, were preaching after wickedness had increased on the earth. And they warned for coming judgment, which was the flood, of course. But Enoch was taken before that judgment came, without seeing death, which is a type of the pre-tribulation rapture. Now, I get back to this as well. There's only one prophecy of Enoch that is recorded or quoted in the Bible. um, And that is found in the book of Jude. And so that's the other place where Enoch is mentioned in our scriptures. In the book of Jude, verses 14 and 15, it says, And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, obviously, it speaks here of the second coming of Jesus. And this makes sense, since he is a type of the church, and the church exists after the first advent of Jesus, and before the tribulation, and the judgment comes. Uh, And then there is no church um, on the earth until the second coming. Uh, We see that's clearly reflected in the book of Revelation, where the churches are mentioned in chapter 2 and 3, and then chapter 4, the first verse, 
speaks of the trumpet, heaven opening, which is a type there of the rapture, and then all the events of the tribulation period, um, the judgment and the wrath of God is mentioned until chapter 14, um, chapter 19, excuse me, where the bride, the church is mentioned again and where we have the second coming of Jesus. Uh, and so it's also appropriate that uh, this um, prophecy of Enoch is mentioned in the book of Jude, which is the very last book before the book of Revelation, the very last before the judgment, if you will. And another thing that we can note from this prophecy of Enoch uh, is that uh, it mentions uh, that Jesus is coming with his saints. Um, and we see the same in Revelation 19, in verse 14, where um, it speaks about the second coming, and it also says that his saints are following him, uh, dressed in white robes. And also Zechariah 14, which also speaks about the second coming, in verse 5 mentioned that he has all the saints with him. Which means that all the saints has to be with him first in order to be able to return together with him. And it doesn't say some saints, uh, Zechariah 14, it says all the saints. So it's not a specific group. And so that points to the pre-tribulation rapture, yeah, which Enoch uh, preached, not with words, but by, uh, by showing it, by experiencing it. Uh, this was a clear object lesson. Um, so we have all these elements and we see that everything is perfectly in harmony. Also mentioned here in the book of Jude is that Enoch is the seventh from Adam. Of course, we, um, we looked at the, that at the generations when we went through all the generations from Adam to Jesus, uh, 60 generations. Um, we saw that Enoch indeed was the seventh, the great grandfather of Noah. And seven is the number of completion. It's the number of God. Uh, it's really God putting a signature on there. But also uh, when it relates to the second coming and the millennial reign after that, we see that um, with the tribulation period, the six millennia uh, the, of the strife of God with men um, is completed. And then the seventh millennium, the seventh prophetic day, the Sabbath uh, commences, the rule of Jesus on earth, where there will be peace. Uh, so, again, perfectly in harmony. Now to circle back, as a church we can learn from Enoch how to please God and how to walk with God. And Enoch was rewarded for pleasing God and he pleased him how? and we read it from Hebrews 11 verse 6, by diligently seeking him. And so Enoch escaped the violent wrath of those to whom he was prophesying. So what does it mean to seek God? Well, it has nothing to do with trying to find God. You can only seek God after you have found him. Um, there is a difference between seek and find. I made this also, um, I talked about this in a, in a previous uh, video, um, which, for which I will leave the link. Um, so it's not that. To seek God means to pursue God, to, um, to, be, uh, to, to constantly try to be like God. And in the little text that we have about Enoch in Genesis 5, uh, it is mentioned twice that he walked with God. And it shows us that he not only believed that God existed, but he was obeying and following God. And he was taken away by faith. Meaning that he had received a promise from God. A promise that he would be taken away. And he had faith. He trusted the promise. Again, remember, this is a type of of the church. This is a lesson to us, the church of the last days. God had promised such a thing because Enoch pleased God. And with that, he fulfilled the purpose for which man was created. And um, 
we read that purpose in Revelation 4, verse 11, where it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. For Thy pleasure they are and were created. That includes man. The promise to be taken away is extended to all those who please God, whether it is to those who sleep in Christ or those who are alive and remain. But how do we please God and how do we walk with God? Amos 3 verse 3 tells us that we can only walk with God if we are in agreement with Him. It says there in a rhetorical question, can two walk together except they be agreed? Thus we have to be in agreement with the way he walks. There is no compromise between our way and his way. The thing is that we must change to be in agreement with him. God does not have to change. God is the same always, today, yesterday, forever. But we have to change in order to be in agreement with him. And that change can only be made by diligently seeking God in order to be like him. So walking with God has to do with our continual relationship with Him, moving toward the goal to be like Him. And it's clear that this was the purpose of God in the beginning. Uh, if we read uh, Genesis 3 verse 8, the first half of the verse, it says there, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It speaks here about Adam and Eve. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. In the beginning, God walked with and freely associated with man. This was God's pleasure. This is why he had created man and everything, actually. But th when sin entered in the scene, uh, God and man no longer walked in step. Man was no longer pleasing God. And man immediately knew it. And that's what we get from the second half of Genesis 3 verse 8. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, of the Lord God, amongst the trees of the garden. They hid themselves. God was still walking with purity, with holiness, with righteousness. But man was walking with defilement. Man was walking naked. Man was walking naked, literally, uh, from the beginning, but um, now spiritually. And um, that is then, of course, um, expressed in the fact that they realized they were naked physically and tried to cover that, which is a type of covering sin. Man no longer had the likeness of God, or in other words, man was no longer like God. Man still had the, uh, was still in the image of God, and this is still the case today, although that is Satan's next target, to make us into the image of the beast, as uh, Revelation calls it. Um, so there is a difference there between um, image and likeness. Uh, you can find more information that in a separate video that uh, we did about that. The contact with God could only be restored if man made an acceptable sacrifice, a substitutionary sacrifice. And the one doing that then had to trust that God uh, would accept it. And that trust was based uh, on a later perfect sacrifice. And it was not always accepted. A uh, prime example, of course, is Cain and Abel. Now, at least we have the advantage, living after um, Christ's first advent, that we can trust in the perfect sacrifice of Jesus. We, we know of it. And um, uh, Jesus has finished that work. No matter what, only after access to God is restored, one can walk with God. That means only through that perfect sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ. And that requires faith. It says also about the uh, sacrifice of Abel in Hebrews 11 that by faith his sacrifice was more excellent. It comes down to faith. Now our walk with God is only pleasing uh, to him 
when it is in agreement with how he walks. And so we need Jesus. Jesus' walk was in perfect agreement with the Father. He is a true and faithful representation of the Father. He was 100% uh, like the Father, had a likeness of 100%. And thus, he could say, uh, as he did to his disciples, we can read in uh, John 14, verse 9, uh, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And so, Jesus can be called a faithful witness, which we read in Revelation. Now, here's the problem with today's church. Today's church does not walk in lockstep with God, but in lockstep with the world. And with the trends of the day, what's trending, that's important. There is unbelief, there is surrender to sin. The church is not a faithful witness to God, but the church is a body. And the body is made up of individual members. If the members are not God-like, and walking with God, then the whole body cannot witness of him. The spiritual health of the body depends on the spiritual health of all the members, which means it ultimately depends on you and me. We cannot resemble God if we are not walking with him, spending time with him, entertaining a daily relationship with him, seeking him, and we cannot seek him without first having access to him and peace with him. Do we, like Enoch, please God? And are we walking with him while trusting his promise, our blessed hope, that we may not see death? Are we living up to our calling to preach the rapture, warn for the coming judgment and preach about the second coming? It is on the doorstep. I want to briefly summarize the elements that we see here in, uh, in the example of Enoch that are an example to us, the church as a whole, but believe, us believers as uh, individually. So it begins with faith. And uh, of course, um, we read in Romans 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word. Uh, of God, of Christ. Uh, faith is where it begins. Faith in Jesus. Eh? Um, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him uh, would not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. Um, if we have faith in this, if we truly believe this with our heart and confess it with our mouth, then um, Jesus... Um, accepts us and restores for us access to God the Father. As Jesus says himself in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So that, that's the access point, that's the door, that's the entrance, that's the way. After that, there is reconciliation. After that, we are in agreement with God. And he will see us also righteous through his son, Jesus. Now we have peace with God. And so, since we are in agreement, we can now walk with him. We can walk with him and um, seek him daily. Have a relationship with him. And through this, through this relationship, through this walk, we will be more like God every day. We will be more pleasing and we will be pleasing to God, which is our purpose, as stated in Revelation 4, verse 11, and as we also can, uh, can render from Genesis. So we see it begins by faith and through that we, we can be pleasing to God. And so that is actually summarized in um, Hebrews 11, verse 6, which we read in the beginning, which is linked sort of to Enoch as the example, uh, where there it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So it's just some clear steps and a beautiful example of how we ought to, um, to, to act with regards to God. And um, 
also to follow this example of Enoch in the sense of um, being a faithful witness to, to the world around us, being a light in the darkness that is uh, prevailing in this, uh, in this world. And um, what is better than uh, to point, first of all, of course, to Jesus and um, as a result to our blessed hope. It is truly on the doorstep. Amen. Amen.